Welcome to part two of this demonstration of the Orchard Content Management System. In this segment, we resume customizing the Firestorm example website. We will create a blog and use that as an opportunity to demonstrate the shape tracing feature extension and provide a lightweight coding scenario involving templates. So now let's proceed to create a blog. I'll go to the dashboard, I'll select blog, and I'll give it a name nothing very clever. It chooses a slug for us and we'll give it a description which I will intentionally put into two paragraphs. We'll say that we do want it on the main menu. Again we'll just say it's called blog and save. If we go to our site we see the blog menu option is now available and there are my two statements about the blog which were supposed to be in two paragraphs but they're in one sentence. This is a problem we're going to find out how to correct. We'll start with returning to the dashboard. We'll select content which is where we can edit the kinds of content parts that are associated with our content types. I'll select content types. I'll say I wish to edit our blog. And I can see here that there is no content part that is capable of taking formatting such as paragraphs. So I'll say add parts and I will choose a body content part which does allow me to use free flowing HTML. The body part is now added and I will keep it with the HTML formatting flavor. I will not choose the markdown option. And I'll hit save. I'll return to managing the blog. I'll talk about the blog properties. Where now, we can see the description that was there before, but in addition, there is the body section, which we've just added. I'll remove this description of two paragraphs and place it into this HTML rendered area and hit save. Let's go look and see what that did. We see now the description of the blog which was supposed to be two paragraphs has now indeed become two paragraphs. But there are no posts so let's go add some material. We'll go back to the dashboard and we'll say new post. So we'll give this a title, nothing clever, and we'll switch to HTML and paste in some material, including a YouTube embedded iframe. So we'll go ahead and publish this now underneath a tag of technology and look at our results. What we see here is that this is a summary page for a blog. As a summary, it only shows the first 120 characters or so of the blog post. To see the rest of it, we have to select more, and then we can see the entire post along with comments. But this might not be our desired behavior. If this was our first time using Orchard, we might go to the dashboard, look underneath the Manage Blog Options or elsewhere to see if we could find a means to manage this. What we would find is there is no such option. This is our first clue that we need to go under the covers of Orchard to find a solution. But the question is, where under the covers should we look to get our answer? The first place to start looking is with a feature called Shape Tracing, which is available as a module. Once again, it's time for us to install another extension. We'll look for Designer Tools, a name that we understand for this purpose as it is provided in the Orchard documentation. This is what contains the shape tracing feature. And we install it. There are actually three features available with this module. We will only demonstrate shape tracing, but we will allow all three features to remain active. The activation was successful, but we can't see what this has done for us until we've gone to our site again. With shape tracing enabled, we can now observe a new button that wasn't there previously, if we select this, it brings up for us the shape tracing view. 
In part one of this series, we had discussed a hierarchy where the layout of the site contains top-level zones, the zones contain content types, and the content types in turn contain local zones. That hierarchy is represented in the left-hand panel here. We can expand and locate any content type within these top-level zones, or rather than tracing them through the panel, we can just move our mouse over regions on the screen and it will highlight what zones are responsible. If I were to click on the Bing Maps area, we are immediately taken and transported to a sidebar zone showing the widget that was selected just a moment ago. And sure enough, we see here Parts Bing Map. We had also stated that each content type is associated with a template, which is basically a razor view. Having selected Bing Map, we can see that the active template associated with it is as designated in this location. If we'd like to know the content of this uh, razor view, we can select Template, and we'll be given a preview of what it contained. And since razor views usually have a model associated with it, if we'd like to know what model was provided to this template, we select on Model, and we are given another little hierarchical breakdown of what properties are available in the model uh, associated with that razor view. Now, getting back to the task at hand, we actually wanted to use the shape tracing tool to help us get under the covers of our blog summary to find if there is a way we could correct that. The first thing we'll do is we'll close the shape tracing view. We'll go to our blog, and then we'll reopen the shape tracing view, expand it a bit, and then highlight to see what part of the shape tree this belongs to. The part we are specifically interested in is the body summary, so we'll select this. And now we can see the template, the razor view that governs this, actually is responsible for truncating the post. We can see that it's taking an excerpt and only providing us the excerpt in this summary form. Now, before we go fix this template to give us the desired result, there are two observations I should underscore. The first is regarding this content type, or should I say this content part, this parts common body summary. This is not actually a blog, this is not actually a blog post, it's just a part of a blog post. That means that if we change this template, it will affect also any other content type that is also using a body part that is rendered in its summary form. If we don't want to have that kind of impact to all other content types in our site, we can use another feature that came with the designer tools known as alternates. We will not be demonstrating this in this session, however, you should be aware of that. The other observation I'll make is that the view of the shape tracing gives us the location of where this template can be found. And as we see with what I've highlighted here, this template is actually being given to us by the Minty theme that we had installed in part one. Armed with that information, we can now proceed to WebMatrix. Assuming that we've already selected the Files option in WebMatrix, we will already be looking at the folders and files of the site. From our shape tracing exercise, we learned that the template we want to change is part of the Minty theme. Well, as you can imagine, that will be found underneath the Themes folder. Here we see the original theme that our first install came with, known as the Theme Machine. We also see Minty, which we installed later. I'll open this, and underneath Views, we see a variety of views that are controlling the content types and even the layout of the entire page. The one that we're after, Parts Common Body Summary, is right before us. Now for our edits. The fastest way around this uh, abridgment that it is currently making would just simply to be to comment out a block of this code. And we'll replace it with a straight up rendering of the, the content as is. With that saved, we can return to the site and we'll put away the shape tracer and refresh.
Now we see we're no longer viewing the uh, abridged version of the post on the summary page. We're seeing the entire post. Now, before we leave this template editing topic behind, it's worth asking, what would have happened in the shape tracer if the Minty theme did not contain the template that was governing the abridgment of these posts? What would we have seen? Well, let's take a look at that. First, we'll go back to WebMatrix, and we'll simply delete the file that we had found in the shape tracer and we had edited moments ago. Then we'll return back to the site, and we'll refresh what I expect to see is that we've gone back into an abridgment mode again. Well, it's time for us to open up the shape tracer and to see what's happening. We'll expand it a little bit, make certain that uh, we can see, and we'll select again on our blog post, move on down to the parts common body summary again, and what we're seeing here is that the template has been replaced by another template core common views parts common body summary as a razor page. This fallback template demonstrates a very powerfully the extensibility capabilities of Orchard. The fact that all the templates that are found throughout Orchard can be overridden simply by providing your own in a theme of your own making. Removing it from the theme means it falls back to what it had in its original installation. Let's go see what this one looks like when we open up in web matrix with the path that is specified here, core common views. We'll close up the themes. We'll go to core common views. And let's see. Here it is. And what we find here is it's essentially the same code as the Minty theme had. About the only difference is a Minty theme was cutting off the text after about 700 characters, whereas the default cuts it off at 200. We can once again restore the behavior we had before by pasting in the edit we had made before. Return to our site. Close the shape tracer and refresh. We're back to where we started. Good. We have just seen how it is possible to make changes to code that belongs to the common core, such as the view we have here before us. Likewise, we could have also made changes to the modules area, which comprises the bulk of functionality in Orchard. Many of these modules have their own views, as you see here. These can be edited as well. However, while it is technically a correct thing to make modifications in the core or in the modules, Truthfully, it is far preferable that such changes are not made in either location, but instead are made in the theme of your choice. This provides a clean upgradability path so that as new versions of modules become available for Orchard or new core code, those changes can be loaded into your site, your upgrade can occur, and you will not lose any of the changes to the code that you had made because your theme will be kept independent from such upgrade paths. Furthermore, Keeping your changes in the theme gives you greater flexibility should you choose to have a multi-themed site, such as a site that supports mobile devices as well as desktop. For those that are curious, a multiple themed site is made possible through a module extension known as Vandalay Industries. We will not be discussing or demonstrating that capability, but this is where it can be found for those who wish to give it a try. This concludes part two of this presentation in which we have introduced shape tracing and have seen a glimpse of the ASP.NET MVC3 underpinnings by way of templates. To continue this presentation, please proceed to part three, which demonstrates additional core ideas of Orchard customization within the Firestorm sample website.